Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny blue sky San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Louise Mahler, who is in Melbourne, Australia. How are you doing, Louise? Good morning. Good morning, John. Yes, it's morning down there. It's evening over here. Um, uh -huh. and, uh, yeah, and how's, uh, how's life down under? Well, I'm in Melbourne and we're in complete yeah. lockdown. And um, yes, that makes it difficult. Yeah. yeah, well, at least it's uh, at least it makes it easier to schedule time with you here because you can't go anywhere. So you're kind of a captive, captive uh, exactly. interviewee. I'm, I'm your captive. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so uh, Louise is a presence and presentation expert, body language and voice expert. So I guess I got to be on top of my game today because I feel like I'm going to be you're going to be assessing me as we go through this. So. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and the subject that we're going to talk about today is getting practical with presence. Okay, so let's let's start at a really baseline here. What do you mean by presence? Because I'm not sure everybody understands it, or maybe they think about it in a fairly narrow sense. Oh, it, it, it's fascinating. I don't think anybody thinks about it at all, John. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, one of the most common things is I have people, you know, coaching clients who ring me who say, um, you know, that they're very stressed in engagement. And I'll ask them what techniques they're using with their body, what techniques they're using with their voice, what techniques they're using with their structures of conversation. And to each of those, they'll say, um, nothing. No, I hadn't thought about it. You know, and I think, well, no wonder you've got a problem. I don't think that people think about, you know, what they're doing. It's all about habitual patterns. It, there is no ideal presence. It's a matter of um, your habitual patterns being the best they can be for the purpose at hand. Yeah, and I think that's, and I think that's a good point because I think we are pretty oblivious a lot of times to it. But it's becoming, I mean, it's always been important, but now if you think about it with people, uh, because of the lockdown, all people are doing a lot more kind of phone conversations, Zoom and all of that. I mean, and they're not getting in front of people that they have to start looking at all the different dimensions of presence. They've got to start thinking about their voice. They've got to start thinking about how they, whether they look into the camera, whether they even switch the camera on to begin with, which is uh, some yeah. pet, peeve, yes. pet peeve of mine. <laughs> I think we've struggled with the whole body and now what's happening, we're under a magnifying glass here with just our head, you know, our head and shoulders. And the question is, uh, where do I put that head and shoulders? And one of the things that I've been looking at is literally not before you even do anything. How do you listen when you only have your head? And I have a little catchphrase that says nod, blink smile like an idiot um you know so nod to the head shows flexibility of mind right. it's flexibility of neck but we get defensive mm -hmm. we jam the neck so it's flexibility of mind um blinking softens the eyes so it shows a softness mm -hmm. and smiling loosens the jaw and the jaw is about aggression so you know not all of us have beautiful dimples uh like you do they are magnificent <laughs> <laughs> i'd give anything for those dimples uh. um, you know, if you don't have those, nod, blink, smile like an idiot. It's just soft and that's your listening position. Um, and so there are tricks that you can use uh, to, to begin to engage effectively. Yeah, and I think that's a great, it, it's a great point because most people don't think about these things. And, they are, and I think people stiffen up, especially in virtual now. I think people start to stiffen up um, yeah. a lot. And, or, or maybe they think that there's, well, there's nothing I can do in this medium. You know? And it's funny, isn't it? Because you see people who are, who are maybe great when they walk into a room, but they're awful on, on virtual for some reason. They totally like lose confidence. Well, if you're six foot six and muscular and magnificent, um, you have just lost that edge, you know, because now you've just got your head. And so it's kind of, it's brought us all back to a common denominator, you know, um, and, and many people are very anxious when they get in front of the screen because we are magnified. So you're looking at your nose, your hair, your eyes, your whatever it is, and, uh, and thinking, I don't want to look at that. And we have to work through that in some way. You know, it's fascinating working with clients who, who begin by talking about themselves and how mm -hmm. they 
can get through things. And then we start to talk about the structures that they use in their engagement and that becomes a focus. And then they start as they move on with their development, they start saying, what about my clients? What do they want? You know, and, and that's just brilliant to see that mind mm -hmm. shift. Um, you know, we've got to get our mind out of ourselves and into what, what is useful for others. But at the same time, you know, we are now the producer of our own show and we're the cameraman. Mm. You know, when I do television, I have a cameraman who puts yeah. me on the screen in the right way. Uh, but when, I, you know, uh, uh, in the virtual environment, I am the cameraman. You know, so I have to, or a camera person, I have to adjust the camera. And people haven't thought about that either. And there is a professional presence that comes mm -hmm. um, because we're competing with television. Yeah, no, there is. I agree with you. And even, uh, let's face it, like YouTube and that, people have started to, you know, I mean, you know, professional podcasters, I mean, it's the production values are right up there with television, if not, if not better in some ways, because they've learned how to maybe create a more engaging um, environment for, for their shows. Uh, but I do think, yeah, that's the thing. You have to become a little proficient at all of these different things. But I think it's like anything else in life, isn't it? I mean, you can either embrace it or you can get scared by it. Yes, and um, it's been cruelty to dumb animals for many years, I think, in that we haven't been given the instruction. So mm -hmm. that we're going out and engaging without instruction. So, for instance, one of the reasons that you would be so uh, successful with your podcast is listening to your voice, the way that you continue to speak. And this is one of the keys to anything where there's an auditory medium is that silence is not golden uh, mm -hmm. in this environment. And you can't break your voice and many people do you don't you know beautifully the voice flows and so it's so listenable uh it's fantastic yeah and i think that's uh i mean i'm part of that obviously comes from practice and experience but i do think that people try to script themselves too much or they try to as you say you know complete sentences with that rather than completing thoughts and i think that's where when you're engaging in a conversation you're really supposed to be flowing with a thought as opposed to like saying, yes, hello, Dr. Louise Mahler. You're in Melbourne. I'm in uh, San Diego. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, look, you know, uh, couldn't we talk forever because there's been no focus on this area. And one of the mm -hmm. other mannerisms that I see is that people die psychologically before the end of a sentence. So, you know, we talk about vocal fry, vocal fry, vocal fries when you withdraw the air so there's only one sixth of the air volume coming out that you need for sound and the vocal folds start to malfunction well but not everybody does vocal fry all the time um, right. uh, but they do do at the end of a sentence and when it comes to sales this is a catastrophe when people say when it comes to sales this is a catastrophe mm -hmm. and they go into vocal fry at the end of the sentence because psychologically that says I have lost commitment to this sentence. And I guess what, you, what you're saying is that people aren't following their thought. Um, yeah. You know, they do lose interest in their sentence. <laughs> and to the person you're with, engaging with in a sales environment, then, you know, psychologically, you're not home. You're not there for them. Yeah. And it, and it definitely betrays a lack of confidence uh, if you do that, if you kind of trail off at the end of, end of your sentence and you don't sort of deliver your thought with any kind of confidence uh, and uh, an emphasis it, it really does the other person but you're almost saying to the other person actually what I'm saying it's not that great no that's right and but then it comes down to the word confidence you know mm -hmm. practical confidence confidence in practice because so many of us think of confidence as a mindset you know mm -hmm. so how do I change my mind well, you know, many of the people that I deal with have to go out tomorrow and do what they need to do. You know, yeah. I don't have time to go back into your mind and say, tell me about your relationship with your mother, John. Yeah. You know, I don't have time. You know, so I have to deal practically with what comes at me physically and vocally. Mm -hmm. And once we look at those physical and vocal habitual patterns and change them to new habits, uh, new habits and patterns, then funnily enough it goes back and affects the mind and people start to say i feel more confident 
uh, and it's a fast track to confidence by actually knowing what you're doing with the body, knowing what mm. you're doing with the voice. And, and that comes from a change plan of understanding your habitual patterns and then changing them to something more effective. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because there's a performance, there's a performance element to it. And I think sometimes people get undone because they, they have the, I think that imposter syndrome, you know, where they lose confidence and they think, actually, I'm not an expert. I don't really know what I'm talking about. And, and Dr. Louise is going to find that out in any minute now, and I'm going to look really dumb. And I think that's, a, that's what happens to a lot of people. They just yeah. lose that confidence because they think, well, I, I, I'm not as good as I thought I was. Everybody goes back to, uh, you know, uh, uh, I know my material, I know my material, I know, I, and I'm like, yeah, no, I, I get that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's performance, but it's actually not, it's really about self-development. So mm -hmm. it's about bringing your best to the engagement, not even necessarily about the perception of others, um, whether they love you, but whether you are bringing your best. And when you bring your best, they will love you. So really mm -hmm. the focus is it on being your best. For instance, if somebody's doing vocal fry, um, they're not getting air out of their body. And quite frankly, yeah. that's a suicide attempt. And it, it's not healthy, it's not good for your brain, and it's not bringing your best. So that's the way I like to look at it. It's we're doing it for ourselves and then you get better results rather than pandering to the perception of others and changing for that purpose. Yeah, and I think there's, and I think uh, there's another point. I presume when you work with people, look, not everybody is gregarious. Not everybody is, is like all of these other things that people maybe associate with, oh, I'm not that kind of outgoing gregarious person. But I know, I know I've interviewed some people, to be honest, I've interviewed people who are quite quiet and monotone but absolutely riveting because yeah. of their, the knowledge they have and, and the way they deliver it. So, I mean, I think sometimes people make that mistake saying, well, if I'm not a gregarious person, I'm going to be rubbish on this anyway. Oh, gosh, isn't that a failing? And, uh, you know, often people will say, I'm an introvert, therefore I can't. No, it, it's not about being an introvert. It's not about your personality um, profile. You know, it's about bringing the best of who you are to the engagement. And it, the, there are different styles, different horses, different courses. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how have, I mean, obviously uh, your business right now, you're doing obviously a lot of work with people around, around virtual. Um, what, are, what are some of the maybe surprising challenges that have come up? Surprising challenges are that people are completely unaware of their voice. Is that a surprising challenge? No, it's not surprising. <laughs> it's surprising to them. It's not surprising to me. The thing is now in the virtual environment, your voice has become super important. Yeah. Uh, and just the lack of awareness of a professional um, of, of, of the things that we can do. I mean, we still have hands, you know, yeah. so where do you, where do you put them? Uh, there is a whole <laughs> range of places to put them. One of those places is not on your head or fiddling with your face. Um, and, you know, I, I, I even pull people up who have their hands around their neck and, and I'm like, oh, I'm thinking that's possibly not your best look with your hand around it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one, one person actually cleaned their ear out with their finger. And, and for 20 seconds, I counted 20 seconds. And when I said, uh, tell me about the finger acting, you know, they said, no, no, I didn't do that. I'm like, would you yeah, like me to play the video yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Just under the magnifying glass, it becomes more obvious the skills and our lack of awareness of the skills. And the problem oh, is advice. that we, yeah, and the reality is that we can't avoid that that's who we are. We can certainly improve upon it and we can work on some of it. But I think that some people are happy to avoid it. You know, I don't want to hear myself back. I don't want to watch myself back. But you have to because this is the world that you live in. Well, you see, John, in, a, you know, I sang, I sang opera for many years in Europe mm. and I was at the Vienna State Opera. I had a soloist contract there. And I know from my performance background that we never used video as a form of feedback. Mm -hmm. So it, feedback, one of the critical things that I know from voice is you get in the moment feedback. So I would never play a video back. 
I will look at this video in real time and analyze mm -hmm. that, but not play it back because it's cruelty to dumb animals. And we, we, we focus on the wrong things. We focus on the negatives that we are. Uh, the other thing is with voice is that you can't hear yourself as others hear you. And mm -hmm. so you're better off with a teacher. Voice people have teachers, they have coaches. They don't listen to themselves back because right. we're not hearing what other people hear. We actually hear better from the inside of the mouth than we do from the outside. So we, we hear, you have to begin to translate and you need help to be able to translate. Um, so, you know, listening, watching your video back, listening to yourself back can often be damaging forms of feedback. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I think that's fascinating that, uh, and I think it's a great takeaway for people that maybe they should be looking for coaches like yourself because, uh, as I said, I mean, this is where we're going. This is where we're going to be. So you might as well make the best of it. And yes, I always say to people, actually, it's things like maybe take a look at your life today and say, OK, what am I investing my money and time in? Uh, and maybe if you're maybe you're a golfer, you love to golf at the weekends. Maybe you you pay for lessons, you, know, you pay for golf lessons. I would say, so why wouldn't you pay for some lessons to do with the thing that actually puts bread on the table? Yes, exactly. It's not going away. You know, our, our new world may not be completely virtual, but it will have large doses of virtual. And why not get it right now? Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And then um, what advice can you give to somebody if they are already engaging? Maybe they're, maybe they're on a virtual call or on a virtual presentation and they maybe things start to go awry. Uh, what, what advice do you have them to get things back on track so they don't like, go, go down in flames? What 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 do you mean by things start to go awry? Things well, maybe start they to... start to lose confidence. Maybe they start to, maybe oh, right. there's silence. Maybe they're not sure. Maybe they're starting to panic that the other person or the other people aren't, uh, aren't, hear, aren't hearing the message that they're trying to convey. Yeah. Uh, keeping the communication flowing. And funnily enough, what is communication? What is flowing? I'll tell you what's flowing. It's airflow that's flowing. So it's silence. You've got to start. Keep the air going. Keep breathing. You know, um, keep breathing. Make sure that your breath hasn't come high and that you've stopped breathing. Just breathe low. You know, I was listening to a TV program that showed eight just eight diaphragmatic breaths uh, will change the mind. But uh, one of the techniques that I use for people is what I call the cover cough. And the cover cough is when you actually <coughs> cough like that, and, but you do a proper kick of the diaphragm, a kapalbhati breath in yoga it's called. The stomach goes in quite violently and it kicks the diaphragm from underneath. <clears throat> it's like the reset button on the computer. Mm. And what that does is it unjams your diaphragm, gets your breath back into your body. And of course, your brain starts to work again because when we stop breathing, the brain stops working. So, uh, you know, get the breath back and then start sharing air. Maybe state what's going on. John, I'm wondering if, you know, this is what's happening, if there's a lack of understanding or just yeah. air the situation but get air back into your body to keep you breathing keep you alive and keep your brain functioning and the cover cough is the reset button that will do that in real time that's a great piece of advice and i guess the other part too is to make sure obviously i mean you talk about presence too it you know presence it always mean it also means you have to be present to have presence as well so you got to make sure that you're focused on whoever you're talking to on the subject and all that and you're not allowing yourself get distracted by other things oh john here's a reality of uh, of face-to-face uh, -face. eye contact you know yeah. Uh, just yesterday, I was coaching an executive and, and I actually got my camera and took photos as this person closed their eyes. Now, this is a, this is a visual preference. They have a visual preference. Good. That's not illegal. Um, <laughs> and that's the way they like to think. Good. But the issue is they can't see and they had their eyes closed for long enough for me to take photos photos of it you know and you you ha we have to be watching people say that maybe the body's not there for therefore the body language is not there to read and it's hard to read people no it's not you're giving away a tremendous amount in your body and your face but i must have my eyes on you to observe mm. that yeah. and uh, you know uh, open your eyes
Yeah, and also not to mention that you, you know, if the other person, you can, they can tell when you're doing this, right? It's kind of quietly off screen. I'm looking down at my phone now, oh, and I'm cool. trying to go, yeah. and then I'm pretending. No, well, I wasn't looking at my phone. I was, I was focused, honestly. <laughs> so I mean, I think that's part of it. Like people have to be very, very conscientious when they're in this because it's very easy to send the wrong messages. And, and if there is a distraction, then again, there are ways of handling it. You know, say the dog rushes in or suddenly disturbs. Yes. You say, oh, excuse me, John, sorry, the dog's just here. Yeah. Thank you. Off you go. Bang. Now we're back again. You know, whereas people tend to try and hide what's going on. And, you know, there's that great video about the man whose daughter came in, you know, pretending she's not there. Anyway, hiding what's going on or then raving on and going, oh, sorry, John, the dog was here. Oh, sorry. You know, we moved on. Mm. Deal yes. with it. State it. Mm -hmm. Move on. Um, and, and they're just ways of handling these things professionally that we don't talk about, you know, and that, that's uh, uh, raising these issues and talking about them you know, is the point of my membership, you know, so where we get together and go, this happened, what should I have done, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. it's so effective, so useful. People are screaming for that kind of help. Yeah, no, I, I, t I couldn't agree with you more. And I think it's a fantastic service that you're providing and a well needed one. And I would very much encourage people to check it out. Um, so we're coming up against the end of our time here. All of Dr. Louise's information will be below the video, but please do tell people a little bit more about yourself before we go. About me? Yes, oh, please. Right, yes. Oh, well, you know, I, 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 I do virtual presentations and I coach and I have a, a membership where we have groups that get together and learn the skills and, and uh, do a video. So, you know, I love helping people be heard. That's my passion. That's my training. That's my PhD, award-winning PhD. That's all mm -hmm. of my study. So, uh, love to help. Yeah, and it's fantastic and so needed. And like I said earlier, please do sometimes have a look at where you're investing your time and effort and money. And like, it's great. We all have hobbies and hobbies as well. But sometimes you do need to invest in your own professional development. Because guess what? There's nobody who cares about your professional development more than you do or should. All right, yeah. my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Thanks again to Dr. Louise in, in Melbourne, Australia for joining us today. And I'll see you all soon for another interview. Thank you, John.